Hello wonderful viewers. If you're new here, welcome to the DIY enjoyment community. Do you have a problem designing a DIY crossover for your speakers? Well, today, I've got the perfect solution for you. I can't wait to dive into this topic together. In the previous video, I explained how to import the manufacturer files into Vituixcad software. Few manufacturers provide their files as text, making it easy to use them in this software, while many of them provide PDF files, so you should derive their information yourself. Using a little bit of creativity, you can also perform the said process on PDF files as well. Just mark some points on the PDF frequency response, and note the frequency and amplitude at the point, and then follow the same steps as before. A lot of time and effort went into making these videos. Do all the steps yourself to become completely mastered. For a better understanding, start with the first crossover video. In this video, I want to show you how to design filters for your drivers. Watch this video till the end because it is the most important part of the series. As I said in the previous video, every speaker has an impedance curve. As you know, the most desirable graph is a flat frequency response. Now add a new condition which is a flat phase response. Passive crossovers can't provide a flat phase response. The way we can reach this target is generally to use a DSP or digital signal processor. Suppose we have a low frequency and a high frequency driver with an impedance of 8 ohms for each. Their responses are absolutely flat and we are going to design a crossover for them. All website links are available in the description. Choose a crossover frequency, for example, 2000 Hz. Now click on the combo box and choose a second order Butterworth. On a new tab, you can see your designed crossover. Look at the polarity of the drivers. As you can see, for a second order crossover, we must have two capacitors and two inductors with these values. Return to the software and implement the circuit. As you can see, there is a dip here. It's due to a 180 degree phase shift between the low frequency and high frequency drivers. They cancel each other around the crossover frequency. The solution is inverting the polarity of one of the drivers. You will see the result in practice is completely different from this explanation, and the polarity of the online calculator is correct. This bump is due to the Butterworth network. If you want to remove it, change the crossover type to Linkwitz, although Butterworth crossover is also standard and usable. The bump is removed, but I should say the copper usage of Linkwitz is more than Butterworth. In the progressive speakers, the manufacturers use electronic DSPs to flatten the phase response that is embedded in a part of the enclosure. For desktop speakers, I will make a tutorial and introduce a software for flattening the phase response. One of the most important parts of crossover design is to remove the baffle effect on the low frequency driver. The manufacturer's response for a specific driver is different from your design response. Because they mount the driver on a baffle named infinite baffle and measure the frequency response. Something like this. As you can see, these dimensions exceed 1 meter, which requires a big size enclosure. This situation gets worse for stereo speakers. You can't place a speaker as big as this in your room. 
The website link is in the description. This is the infinite baffle response. A DIY enclosure is much smaller, which causes a 6 dB loss in low frequencies. This is the baffle effect. The frequency response for your design is something like this. It is no longer a flat response accordingly. Load the created two-way project. Do the same to select the baffle diffraction tool. After that, select your baffle dimensions and apply the baffle effect to the driver of interest. Enter the diameter of the low frequency driver here. As you can see, for the high frequency driver the baffle effect is not mandatory because the loss is out of its frequency range. Adjust the location of the driver at the desired point and place the microphone in the center. This is a virtual measurement microphone. Perform the baffle effect on the low frequency driver files. Export the files for O, 30 and 60, close the software, and run it again. You can see the baffle effect now. The baffle effect produces an annoying sound and kills bass. Don't worry, this problem is solved by a simple circuit. Open this website, the link is in the description. Scroll down to see the circuit and these four boxes. RE is the DC resistance of the driver voice coil in ohms. LVC, the voice coil inductance in millihenries. WB is the width of the baffle in centimeters or inches, which was 35 centimeters. And DB is the amount of attenuation required in decibels. Before designing the filters, we should connect it to the driver of interest. As you can see, the circuit works correctly, removes the baffle effect, and flattens the frequency response. This circuit is also usable for a single full range driver on a baffle. I should mention that I changed this capacitor to 22 to make the impedance response flatter. This peak in the impedance curve of the tweeter may cause a nonlinear effect on the frequency response. So, it's better to reduce it to get a flat impedance response. The circuit used is very simple. I changed the resistance to 6.7 ohms, but you use the same value as the circuit.
The peak has been removed. I choose a cutoff frequency of 1400 Hz. Now, let's check that each driver has how much impedance at this frequency. You should know the DC resistance is not a proper value to design a crossover, but the impedance at the crossover frequency must be considered. With a little change in the tweeter capacitor, you can eliminate this very small bump. The resulting frequency response is a flat graph. The gray is the phase response of design, and the green is a flat minimum phase. We can obtain it with the DSP. Contrary to what has been said, the reverse polarity of a driver causes a null in the frequency response, therefore the two drivers should have the same polarity in practice. The red curve shows how much directivity is in the design, according to the imported angles. The curve shows there is a bit of directivity at 60 degrees. Because we don't have any information for angles above 60, we should simulate the speaker in software like Akabok to check the directivity. In the next video, you will learn how to purchase and adjust the circuit parts. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoy the content. I love reading your comments, so let me know your thoughts below.